Hi there, it's Ms. Novakowski coming to you from the studio at Grower Elementary in the Richmond School District. And the project I'm going to share with you today is how to make your own geoboard. So you might be familiar with geoboards. They're often plastic and they have little pegs and you use elastics to make different shapes. And then you can also think about area and perimeter and different ways to measure and compare shapes using a geoboard. So the materials you need are a piece of wood, it could be a tree cookie or a tree slice like this, or a piece of rectangular or square wood that you might be able to find. You need a hammer and you need some nails, some things to measure with, um, and then some elastics to create your shapes with. Hi there, just a reminder that when you're doing a project with hammers and nails and wood, it's really important that you have the permission of an adult in your home to do that and maybe actually have them with you when you're doing the project. It's also really important that you protect your eyes. I have built-in eye protection because I wear glasses, but sometimes when you're hammering, some things can go flying up, you know, whether it's a nail or a little piece of wood, and you wanna make sure you're protecting your eyes. So you might want to wear some eye protection if you don't have glasses on like I do. To make this circular geoboard, I'm using a slice from a branch, so it's pretty circular, and I've cut out a circle, you could trace a cup or something, um, that will fit inside of here. And I've just folded this, lining up the edge of the circle here, and I've folded it into eight sections. And that fits just inside of there. I'm just gonna, you don't need to do this. I'm gonna just help you to see the different points. At the end of the, each fold line, that's where I'm gonna put a nail. So I'll just make it in red here so it's a little easier for you to see. And then I'm just gonna tape this, whoops, tape this into the middle of my tree branch slice here so that it stays put. We'll see if that works. Okay, I'm just gonna try and center it as best I can. All right, so I'm gonna use those markers to help me with the nail. So when you hammer in a nail, you hold it with your fingers, just hold them a little bit away from the top. And again, you're just gonna be really careful that you don't hit your fingers. You don't need to lift your hammer up really high. You're just gonna tap, 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 tap. And then once it feels like it's in, you can remove your fingers and then just tap a little bit more. So there, I've got one in, and then I keep doing that for all of them. Again, hold it in position right where you want it. And I'm going through the paper, that's okay. That's just gonna help me make sure that I've got these positioned correctly, and I can tear away the paper afterwards. I'm gonna move my fingers down away from the top of the nail, and then just gentle taps until it's secure, trying to keep it as straight as I can. And then I can move my fingers away and tap it down. So I've got all my eight nails tapped in now, but they're all, you can see they're all a little bit different height and we want them all to be the same. And I want them in the wood a little bit more securely. So you can either use a ruler and measure so they're all the same height. I'm gonna just use this wood that I have here and use it as a referent. I'm gonna line it up against here. This is something that carpenters actually do. And then I'm gonna tap it down until it gets to that wood so that I know that they're the same height. See how that's working there? I just put that near the nails, and then tap, 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 till I hit the wood. And then I know that I've got it at the same height. And I'm gonna do that for all my nails here. So I have my nails all now the same height, and I can just rip away this paper here from the inside. And I have there a circular geoboard. And now I can add my elastic. I might do one around the outside to start. And again, because it's not perfectly circular, you can actually see that it's more of a polygon there. But then I can go across, make different designs. Think about the diameter of this circle by going across. What is the radius? All these intersecting lines here. Right. So again, have some fun making your own circular geoboard. 
So I mentioned this looks more like a polygon that you can sort of see the straight sides here. So it's actually kind of like an octagon. If I added more nails in between, that would make those sides a little bit shorter and make it feel a little bit more circular. So that might be something you want to consider when you're doing a circular geoboard. So when you're hammering, you hold your nail near the bottom, and line it up with the dot, move it down as much as you can so that you're away from the top where you're hammering. And again, you don't need to lift the hammer up high. You just need to tap it close. You hold the nail as straight as you can, and you keep tapping until it feels like it's in there, and then you just tap it a little bit more until it's secure. So once I started hammering, I realized that every centimeter was too close. So I'm now skipping every, uh, every second dot, so doing it every two centimeters. And so I'll have not as many nails, but I'll still have the same size of rectangle geoboard. So you can see here that I've actually, I've changed the nails and changed my grid. This wood was actually quite hard. So those little nails were having a really hard time going into the wood. So I chose some slightly bigger nails with a bigger head to make it a little bit easier for me to hammer them in. And I made my rectangle a little bit smaller. So I can see now that those nails are, some of them are not so straight. I'm not that worried about that, but they're a little bit uneven. So I do need to make them even again. And I'm gonna use my block here to help me. I'm gonna put it up against here and then tap these down until they're even with that edge of the wood and do that for all the nails. So now I'm gonna just peel the paper up over the nails and then use my elastic bands to make a design on my Gia board. For this last geoboard project, I'm using a piece of wood that I had left over from another project, and I just sanded all the edges. I could paint this or stain this if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave it plain. And so I'm gonna think I'm gonna do a rectangular geoboard here in the middle. And so I'm gonna use my ruler and sort of plan it out. Um, I wanna leave a border around the outside. So I'm thinking, so this piece of wood is just over 30 centimeters and I want to leave a couple centimeters on each side as a border. So I think I'll do, uh, you know, about 26 centimeters wide. And then I think about, I have to think about how often I want to space my, um, where I'm going to put my nail hole. So I'm just, again, planning this out. Is it going to be every three centimeters or every four centimeters? If it's 26 centimeters, that doesn't really divide evenly. So maybe I'll do actually a 24 centimeters and maybe I'll do it every one, two, three, maybe every four even. So every four, so I'll do some four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. So I'll have six nails across the top there and I'm just gonna mark those with my pen and then I will measure again the same here and decide how many I want, how many can fit here with being four centimeters across to make a rectangle. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so I've got all my dots on here, marked every four centimeters, and now I'm just gonna take my nail, put it over one of the dots, and just try and hold it as straight as I can, hold it at the bottom, and just tap the top in, and then as soon as I feel it's secure, I can take my fingers away, and keep them away from the hammer, and then again, I don't have to lift up the hammer very high, just tap that in, and then I'm gonna do that for all the nails. So again, as you start to do rows, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you even those out because it's really hard to make sure they're all the same height once you have them all hammered in. So you could use a ruler, whoops, just reaching my ruler here, and measure if you want to make sure that they're the same height. But what carpenters often use is what's called a jig and you just put it up against the side here. And now I can hammer them down. So that one's already right at the level of that. So I can use this to help me measure this one. It's right at the level the height that I want it to be. This one. So they're not quite exactly even. That's okay. 
There we go. So you can see they're all that now about the same height measured up against that block. So I can use my elastics here to make shapes. So there, I've made a square. And then I could decompose it by putting an elastic across the middle and decompose it into two triangles. Or I could extend this and make a trapezoid here that intersects with my square. And then that shows a triangle in the middle. So it's just a way to investigate shapes and then area, area and perimeter as well. So for example, uh, for this square, it has a perimeter, let's count the units. So the unit is between the nails, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units is the perimeter. And then the area is the amount of space in the side and area is measured in square units. So there's one square, two squares, three squares, four squares. So this square has area of four square units and a perimeter of eight unit lengths.